1,966,043 Bibles were distributed, 28% more than 2021. Interestingly, almost 20% of those Bibles were distributed throughout Ukraine. Also, almost 20% are distributed through Russia. In 2022, Eastern European Mission received $2,000,000 in unsolicited contributions. These are contributions that were not part of the budget used to print Bibles. Dedicated to aid for the people of Ukraine. They have successfully, through their partners that they do business with, distributed all these funds. Let's pray. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for giving us a path in God post through this life. Your word reveals who we are and what we are not. It penetrates the core of our moral and spiritual life. It discerns what is within us, both good and evil. Your word is living, life-changing, and dynamic as it works in us. It is my prayer that we may seek it, share it, and let it shape our lives each step of our way. In Christ's name, amen. This is not a new song. A little archaic language in spots, but uh, conveys the message of why we're here this morning and what we're about to do in a few minutes. Commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection. The resurrection of our Savior. Oh, sacred heaven, time of our worship where we set aside everything else in the world and we think about only Jesus and his sacrifice, the blood that he shed that sets us free. I'm going to put aside all the things that are we worried about before we got here and we worry about afterwards and to just think about him. I want to share <clears throat> just one story real quick about communion. It's uh, communion has at many times in my childhood been a source of the best and worst memories of being in church. Um, some of you here probably, I know several of you remember me being carried out of the church screaming as a young child in communion. I 
know several of you remember that from when I was little. Um, but my favorite memory, my whole childhood, and I, my dad's never heard me say this before. Um, I remember when I was a kid, my dad would sit me on his lap. And he may have just been doing this so I would behave, but he'd whisper the story of the crucifixion to me in my ear. And I would sit there with my eyes closed and think about it. And from a very, very young age, he did it many times, and it taught me how important this moment is. This is why we're here at church, is to remember this, and to think, thank Jesus, and remember how awful what he went through was for us. And as my kids were raised, I've tried to do the same thing for them, because it made a difference in how I look at church and Jesus' sacrifice. So... Let's think about how important that was, <clears throat> how it sets us free, how we can live happy and let our sins be gone. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, that incredibly painful long time that he spent there bleeding and stretching and dying on that cross out in the burning sun. How his father turned away from him. He took on the sins of the world, my sins, every one of them, and washed them away. And that is a gift that we can't ever repay, Lord. We ask that you help us remember that and think about that as we partake of his body. We pray in his name. Amen. Pray before we partake of his blood. Dear God, we come before you again thinking about that sacrifice, ready to drink. Drink the cup which symbolizes his blood and all that blood that he shed for us on that day. The blood that washes us clean. In Jesus' name, amen. give to the work of the church here. Uh, the tray's sitting out on the table if you want to do it the old-fashioned way or if you want to do it the new tech way. There's the QR code on the bulletin that you can scan and it'll take you right there. So as we prepare, I want to put our minds in the right place and pray for the offering. Dear Lord, we thank you that we're all able to be here, that we're blessed to live in America, blessed to have the good things that go on in our lives, Lord. We, we live in comfort that the entire history of the world has never had. And we ask that you help us remember those things and be grateful for them and take parts of those and give back. Give of our bodies, give of our minds, give of our blessings. We ask that you help us remember that. In Jesus' name, amen.
We read in Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Routine, and we're going to dismiss the kiddos from age two to fifth grade. We'll sing this song before Michael brings us our lesson of the hour. There's a message true and glad for the simple and the sad. Bring it out, bring it out. It will give them courage new, it will help them to be true. Bring it out, bring it out. Is that time of year when the weather is getting nicer, seasons are changing. Some of you may be starting or have already started spring cleaning. <laughs> Rachel and I have been going through the process of going into some old boxes, going through all of the stuff that's been sitting there in those boxes and trying to decide what are we going to do with all this stuff? We've got all these boxes that have been packed away, and we're going through it, going through this process, figuring out, well, what do we keep? What can we sell? What do we just throw in the trash? It is amazing what you can accumulate over time. How much stuff you can end up having. And I'm going through these boxes, and I'm like, why is this taking up space? Why have we held on to this? This needs to be thrown away. I open one box, there's a whole bunch of folders in it. I start looking through those folders. These are phone bills from 10 years ago. <laughs> Why do I have this? Throw it away, trash. We open another box, there's all these plastic cups. There's more plastic cups than we can fit in the cupboards. Why do we have it? Throw it away. We open one box, full of pint. That was not my box. <laughs> Why do we have pine cones? Well, she said they're decorations. Oh, we'll go to the yard and get more pine cones if you need them. Throw those away. There's stuff that at one time may have been worth keeping. 
But at this point, it's just been sitting in a box for years. We've been here at Biltmore for almost five years now, and there's stuff that we boxed up that has still not come out of the box. If we haven't used it for five years, do we really need to keep on hanging on to it? And as we've been going through it, sometimes Rachel and I agree on what to do with it. Sometimes not. Sometimes she wants to hang on to something. I'm saying, why? Then I want to hang on to something, and I have to be like, okay, with her. Now I've got to ask myself, why? Why? And many of you may have gone through the same process at some point. We have a tendency to hang on to things we don't need. We box things up, or we put them in the back of the closet, we pack it away, and we don't see it again for years. And all it's doing is taking up space. For this morning's sermon, I thought we would talk about the things that we hang on to. The things that take up space in our lives. Things that we don't need, but for some reason we are keeping. I'm not talking about the physical things. In 2 Corinthians 5:17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. That is a beautiful verse. We are made completely new in Christ. And not only are we new, the old is gone. The old has passed away. It is no more. Now that doesn't mean we don't have any more problems. Life is just wonderful and perfect now. Life still throws us some curveballs. Sometimes it still gets us down. There are going to be trials and tribulations. That happens. There's another really encouraging, beautiful verse, just one chapter before this, 2 Corinthians 4.16. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. When we are in Christ, when we are in the family of God, when that sin and those problems get us down, we can give it to God. We can give it to our Father, and we are being renewed day by day. Every day is a reset. Every day is a new opportunity. Every day that we wake up is a fresh start. And when we confess our sins to God, we repent, and we make every effort to walk in the Spirit, We are constantly being renewed. Yet, we hang on to some of those old things. Even though we know what's in the past, it's over, it's gone, there are some things that just stick with us. And there are some things that are just really, really hard to let go of. Going through some of our boxes, there's stuff in there that I'm like, I don't need this. I'm never going to do anything with it. This is only going to take up more space, which is going to cause more problems. But I can't get rid of it. I can't bring myself to let go of it. This is part of me. This is who I am. No, God does not want you struggling with depression. But if you've had it for the last five years, ten years, if it's been a part of your life that long, what do you know? It's who you are. How do you just let that go? You don't even know life without it anymore. And for some of you, it might seem a little backwards and counterintuitive, but others may identify with this and know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, I know I should let it go. I know I need to get over this. I know I need to put it behind me. That's scary. I think I'm going to hang on for a little while. I think I want to keep this for a while. God does not want you to be stagnant in your life. But you know that divorce that happened a long time ago really messed you up? You can't get past it. Still there. That close friend who wronged you, 
it's something terrible to you, it really messed you up. And you can't get past it. That death in the family that rocked your world, that way that you were mistreated, whatever it is, it's still hanging on. And you can't get past it. One of the conundrums that Christians often face is, I know God has forgiven me. But I can't forgive myself. I know God doesn't see that sin anymore. I still do. I know all that stuff's in the past and it is no longer held against me. But I still hold it against myself. Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Endurance races are not easy. And I think we all know that life is an endurance race. Life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. We're going to go through a lot of stuff, and it's going to be difficult. So how do we run that race? Well, the author says, let us also lay aside every weight. You don't want to be carrying extra weight in an endurance race. It's not going to go well for you. In fact, you don't want to be carrying any weight in any race. Why not? Well, obviously, it slows you down. It makes it hard. I've got extra weight on me. I can't run as fast. Think about that as it relates to your walk with Christ. How effective is our ministry? We've got a whole bunch of extra baggage. To How well are we doing the work of Christ? We've got to carry all of this stuff. It is just slowing us down, dragging us down. One day, when I was in the Army, we went out to a football field to do our PT. And we had to do a series of buddy carries up and down the football field. It was never fun. One of the carries we had to do was called a neck drag. Neck drag is just in case you ever come under fire, you have to stay really low. So your buddy lays on the ground flat on his back, and you have to straddle him, get over him, and he's going to interlock his fingers behind your neck and just hang on, and you've got to bear crawl and drag him under you. And I got paired up with this really, really, really big guy for this one. <laughs> This guy was 6'5", at least 250, I'm pretty sure it was more than 250 pounds, and I had to drag him on my hands and knees the entire length of the football field. I can run 100 yards with ease. 100 yards isn't even a warm-up, but trying to drag that guy, trying to drag all that extra weight while I am on my hands and my knees, Clawing at the turf for every inch, it exhausted me. I was completely spent. I had nothing left after that. What are we carrying in our life that is weighing us down, that is exhausting us? What do we have that is slowing us down and hindering us and holding us back? In the spiritual house that we've built, what do we need to get rid of? Because it has just taken up space and does not belong. If I had to guess, there are probably a lot of people here this morning who are still holding on to grudges. You're still angry or upset about something that happened a long time ago. Something happened to you, maybe it was a friend, maybe it was family, who knows. Something happened to you and it hurt you. It cut you. Really bad. 
and you haven't been able to truly forgive that person. And let's be honest about it. Forgiveness is not always easy. It's easy to say, oh, you need to forgive them. Of course, we all know you should forgive them. You can tell other people you need to forgive them. That can be hard sometimes. There have been times in my own life where somebody did something to me and I held on to it longer than I should. And eventually I got to the point that I realized this is eating me up. This is messing me up. I need to let this go. So I forgive them. I forgive them and I say, they're done, forgiven, it's over. And then a week later, it's still eating me up. Now I'm like, well, maybe I didn't forgive them quite like I thought. Anyone ever have that happen to you? It's not easy. But it is necessary. And it may not happen quickly. You may have to work at it for a long, long time. But working at it is necessary. If we are going to be the person Christ wants us to be, we have to be able to lay aside that weight. We have to be able to let that burden go. We can't have some personal grudge dragging us down and hindering Christ in us. If I had to guess, there are many people here this morning struggling with self-identity and self-perception issues. You may struggle to find your value and your work, your relationships or your career or even right here at church. You have this view that I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm just not the sort of person I should be. I'm messed up. I'm not this. I'm not that. And the words I can't are far more prevalent in your thoughts than I can. And you're carrying around this weight of limitation within you. Because you believe the worst about yourself. You will never be best version. And Christ wants to work through you. He wants to do things through you, but you are not letting him because you're saying, oh, I can't. I'm not good enough. You're cutting him off before he even gets started. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, now to him who was able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Far more abundant. Far more abundantly than what? Than all that we ask or think. We can't even imagine what Christ can do in us. <coughs> We ask for something. Christ says, I can do better. I can go bigger. You're thinking too small. I can do far more abundantly than that. That's the kind of power he has. And where is that power? According to this verse, it is at work within us. The only thing that is hindering that power, the only thing that slows it down, is us. It's us carrying all that extra weight. It's all that extra baggage that we're trying to bring with us. It's all that extra stuff that we just can't let go of. If I had to guess, there are many people here this morning that are still holding on to, are struggling with, and ashamed of past sins. I did that one thing that one time, and it's bad. Real bad. I can't bring myself to say it out loud. I can't admit it to anyone. I have to hide it away deep, deep down. I can never let it see the light of day. I hate myself. For it. Did Christ die for that sin? Yes, he did. 
Did Christ take that sin to the cross? Yes, he did. Did Christ forgive that sin? Yes, he did. We know from Scripture, from the Word of God itself, there is no sin too big. No sin too shameful. Nothing you have done that is so terrible and so awful, Christ can't take it away. 1 Peter 2.24, He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness by His word. You have been healed. Die to sin. Live to righteousness. Is that old sin still alive in you? Christ forgave it. He got rid of it. It doesn't have to be a burden anymore. It's gone. It doesn't have to be a weight in your life. It's over. It doesn't have to drag you down and hold you back anymore. But is it still there? Dragging you down? Holding you back? What better time than right now to start doing some strength? What better time than today to start taking inventory of your life? It's time to start figuring out what are you holding on to? needs to go in the trash. What sort of grudges or sins or shame or embarrassment or negativity or pain or hurt or whatever it is are you holding on to needlessly? What is it in your life that serves no other purpose than to just take up space and cause you problems? It's time to get rid of it. It's time to let it go and part ways with it. And I know, easier said than done. But if we're going to be the people Christ wants us to be, it still needs to be done. Christ needs us to run that race to the best of our abilities, and that means getting rid of the pointless way. Christ needs us to embrace that power that gives us far more abundantly than all we ask or think. That means getting rid of anything that's going to hinder it. Why do we have all the junk and clutter in our lives? Why is it even there in the first place? Because we put it there. We let it be there. Nobody else is making us hang on to that stuff. God is not holding it over our heads. It is not something that is useful. We're serving a purpose, but we choose to let it live in our lives. We choose to let it stay there. Romans 5, 9 through 11, Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God, by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. <coughs> Notice how many times Paul says, reconcile, save, justify. When we are in Christ, we are made new, and that new doesn't come with all that old baggage. There's nothing from that old that comes with us. We are reconciled to God. We are made right with God. That means all the old junk is gone. All the stuff that got between us and God, it's gone. So why are you still hanging on to it? Christ has called you for a purpose. If you're being hindered in that purpose, if you're being slowed down, if you're being weighted down, if you can't run the race that you've been called to, because you're still hanging on to all that garbage in your life, it's time for some spring cleaning. 
It's time to start throwing some things in the trash. Getting rid of it. If you are ready to turn your life over to Christ and to put him on in baptism, let him make you totally new. And we offer the invitation to do that right now. If you've already done that, you did that a long time ago, but over the course of time, you've accumulated a lot of extra stuff that you're ready to get rid of. This invitation is for you as well. If you have some need, please come while we stand and sing. <laughs> I know the Lord will find a way for me. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the road into the right. I know the Lord will find a way for me. The Lord has sent to preach the word to all. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you today thanking you so much for this opportunity to come here this morning, sing songs of praises to you, and to hear a, another portion of your word from Michael. A great lesson today, Father. We realize that Christ did so much for us. But what we need to realize, Father, is he wants us to be the most happiest, joyful, peaceful people on the face of this earth. So that people will see our light shining and want to know why. And this is a great opportunity for us to tell them about Jesus. Give us that opportunity today and every day. We thank you, Father, so much for the peace that you bring us. Help this day to be a new day, a day of starting over. A day that we wipe the slate clean and live for thee totally. We thank you so much. For your love and for Jesus' love, go with us throughout this day and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.